It's a complicated question. You know, why, why should you care about blind cave fish that live a couple hundred feet below us? Uh, why should you care about little rainforest frogs? What I generally tell people when they come to the zoo and they ask that question, I tell them before I answer it, go home and take an inventory of all of the medicines that you have in your house. You cannot come up with a list where at least 75% of the medicines are not directly derived from nature. And even if you don't care about the environment, and even if you don't care about forests and you don't think in a green way, your life undoubtedly will depend on one of these medicines at some point or another. For a lot of our guests, I think that going to a zoo, a trip to the zoo, is really one of the only avenues that they have where they can see wildlife. And, and I think zoos and aquariums are one of the only reliable avenues through which people can actually see wildlife and connect to wildlife any longer. Main responsibilities of an animal care specialist are welfare and husbandry for animals. So in Mammals One, we take care of a variety of different animals. So that's feeding, training, cleaning areas, making sure everything is in the best condition and standard for them. It's hard work. Obviously you see, especially in Texas, summers are 100 degrees plus, or you know, when we had that snowstorm, I slept here at the zoo. I was um, on grounds 24 seven, taking care of the animals. We were doing everything we can. I think in the zoo environment, something I'd like the public to be more aware of, I think is just all the planning, all the management, all the, you know, for every, basically every species in the zoo almost, there's what's called the SSP plan, SSP program, species survival programs. Um, so basically they're gonna look at, you know, they're trying to make sure these species in, in zoos are sustainable, like their populations are sustainable, that they can have healthy genetics for 100 years down the road. Um, you know, a lot of these species that, you know, aren't doing so well, they need to be managed so that way we, they can keep track of genetics, they can keep track um, to give them the healthiest chance of being a long-term species. Um, a lot of, obviously a lot of animals um, are going extinct and so that's, you know, the goal of the SSP is to pre prevent that from happening. So the Association of Zoos and Aquariums, uh, it is a major network of zoos in North America um, and now expanding. I think there are some zoos that are members in, in Mexico and Latin America. Interestingly, <clears throat> San Antonio Zoo was one of the very first zoos accredited by the AZA way back when the AZA started. To become a member, you have to meet basic standards, right? And those are well-defined standards that the AZA has written out. Those standards involve a lot of things. They involve how you do business, how the zoo is laid out for guests and things like that, but mostly they focus on animal welfare. I think the whole point of the AZA is to lift the standards of the average zoo or aquarium to make sure that more than just the bare minimum needs of the animals are being met. We're mostly interested in making sure that we provide the absolute best case scenario for animals that are outside of the wild, animals that are serving as animal ambassadors. We give them the most space possible, we give them the best conditions possible, we give them the best enrichment possible, we make sure that the diets are exactly what they need or more, um, that their, their overall state of well-being is as good as it possibly can be, and that if we get an opportunity to breed some of these in captivity, we do that. All the animals have choice, right? So they choose how they want to live out their day and how they want to interact with people or their um, exhibit or things like that. So we are not forcing them to do anything. And that's something I really like to uh, emphasize for people is that they have so much choice in this setting that their lives are so completely taken care of. The goal of zoos is to keep animals at at a healthy population and to keep them around long term. You know, you look at a lot of the species, some of the rhino species, I mean, there are barely only a few of some of the rhino, of the Asian rhino species in the wild, you know, and if a lot of them are at um, protected areas, protected reserves now, and if it weren't for those protected areas and, and for zoos contributing to those species, you know, some of those populations would have gone extinct already. It's a lot of times, you know, as animal care specialists, and we want to encourage an animal's natural behavior. So we want them to do what they're, you know, what they're going to do in the wild. Um, like the, the lions, you know, a lot of times guests are like, well, how come they're sleeping all day? Well, lions sleep 20 plus hours in the wild. You know, they do most of their hunting in the morning, they're more active in the morning or later in the evening. Um, and so a lot of times those natural behaviors will be in the animals here in the zoos too. That's what we want to encourage. We want to encourage them to do natural behaviors. So. Some of these animals have never been in captivity ever, so no one knows how to care for them. So just how like you have a dog and everyone reads a book to how to care for a dog and to train it, there's no book for a Georgia blind salamander. <laughs> so we kind of make those protocols where like, 
figuring that out and for other institutions down the line. You know, we're the Center for Conservation and Research, but the zoo does a whole lot of other stuff as well, such as, you know, allocating funds to a specific conservation project that occurs maybe not in the United States, but somewhere else for a species that we have in our care. And I think people forget about that because they just see a cute, cuddly animal, but a lot of these species are only found in zoos. Um, we work in Chile and, and we, we work on uh, conservation efforts with amphibians there. We work uh, in China with the Chinese Academy of Sciences uh, in South China exploring caves and documenting blind cave fish for the Chinese government. We work in the mountains of Japan with Japanese giant salamanders. We even work in the Gulf of Mexico with deep sea wildlife. When people go to a zoo, they go with their family and typically it's for entertainment value, right? And they buy tickets to get into the gate and they buy things while they're at the zoo. When you do all that stuff, that revenue stream that comes in came from your family for entertainment. We take it and some of that is diverted to conservation. There's no other major stakeholder anywhere in the world that can do that. Take entertainment funds and redirect them to conservation. When people come through the gates, we use our signage and we use our interpreters to educate people about the conservation issues that are taking place, educating the public is a huge part of the battle, right? If, if folks don't know what's happening in the wild, they're not gonna care about it and they're certainly not gonna donate money to it. When they go to zoos and aquariums, they learn about all of those things. I know it's hard to look past some of the exhibits and how they are like enclosed in a way, but as I mentioned, our job is literally to give them everything they would want or need or could have in a day-to-day -day basis. Also just have an open mind, see that these zoological settings exist for a reason, not because they're um, to be on display or you know we're taking advantage of having them. We are providing an experience for people.